Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Assumption of Command Ceremony for the 379th Expeditionary Air Base Group and changes of command ceremony for its subordinate squadrons. I am Technical Sergeant Noel A. Martice, your narrator for today's ceremony. The military change of command ceremony is a tradition deeply rooted in history, dating back to July 3, 1775, when General George Washington drew his sword under an elm tree in Cambridge, Massachusetts, to assume command of the Continental Army. During the American Revolution, military units carried distinctive flags designed to match the color of their uniforms and emblazoned with the motto selected by the commander. When soldiers followed their leader into battle, this flag provided a highly visible point around which members of the unit could rally during the pandemonium of battle. Because of its importance, the flag was used in the Continental Army's earliest change of command ceremonies. The organization's banner was exchanged in full view so every soldier could see the officer now, now entrusted to lead them into battle. The modern ceremony you see today is rooted in this military tradition and symbolizes the passing of command so all may witness the changing of leadership responsibilities. The 379th Air Expeditionary Wing would like to recognize several distinguished guests who are present today. Please hold your applause until the end. Deputy Commander, 379th Air Expeditionary Wing, Colonel Josh Beeman. Command Chief, 379th Air Expeditionary Wing, Chief Master Sergeant Christopher Murphy. We would also like to welcome all colonels, commanders, chiefs, senior enlisted leaders, first sergeants, special guests, and especially the men and women of 379th Expeditionary Air Base Group. In a few moments, we will commence the ceremony where the Expeditionary Air Base Group and its subordinate squadrons will conduct combined changes of command. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the playing of Congress and Flourishes, presented by the Colors, singing of the United States National Anthem by Senior Airman Keanu McNeil and the invocation by Chaplain Christian Che. Reset. Hugs.
Pull the string. Hurt. Okay, all of them are joined in prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, I give you thanks for this day and ask for your blessing upon this momentous event. We recognize, as a nation wise king once wrote, that there is a time for everything, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to uproot, and similarly, a time to take command, and a time to relinquish command. Thank you for the faithful and outstanding service of these outgoing commanders, and I pray that you will keep and watch over these incoming commanders, so that the Grand Slam team remains the epicenter of our projection. As we also recognize, our world is still in need of valiant warriors like the men and women gathered here. However, we all long for the day when we can beat our swords into plowshares and our spears into pruning hooks, when nations will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. But until that day, I ask that you will fortify every leader here with unparalleled wisdom, moral courage, and unwavering strength. And now as we are in the midst of this pivot, I ask that your hedge of protection will surround those traveling home, as well as those of us who will remain on station to carry on the mission in the months ahead. And as always, I ask that you surround our families and loved ones with your love and grace. For I pray all this in your most holy name. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Thank you, Honor Guard, for presenting the colors, Senior the new Mill for the beautiful recognition of the national anthem. And thank you, Talbot Che, for the wonderfully heartfelt prayer. It is my pleasure to introduce today's presiding official, Commander 379th Air Expeditionary Wing, Brigadier General Richard Dickens. Okay, well, thank you, and good morning, Team IUD. Awesome, it's a great day for this. Hey, thanks to all of you joining us today, either real time in person or after the fact by video. No doubt, this is a unique ceremony specially tailored to fit today's Grand Slam wing. As we pass the bulk of command from 24.2's rotation to 25.1. Before I forget, thanks to the team that made today's ceremony possible, it takes significant effort to book it together a ceremony this complex. It's my sincere appreciation to everyone involved, both on stage and behind the scenes, and how about another round of applause for that fantastic national anthem. Now, I'm going to alleviate your fears up front, because I see some of you in the back counting the number of guys that we have over here. Now, there's not going to be a dozen speeches today, just two, and mine will be brief since we have a lot of flags to exchange. But I do want to make sure that we take time to honor the privilege of command, particularly in the combat arena. I want to start by acknowledging the great work that Colonel Jeff Morazic did as the outgoing commander of the 379th Expeditionary Air Base Group, or EADG, leading the shift from a traditional wing structure to its current structure with a tremendous breadth of responsibility, combining elements of previous operations, maintenance, medical and mission support groups into the largest EABG in the AOR, 2,400 airmen strong across nine squadrons. In fact, a group that is larger than the other expeditionary wings. The reason this is an assumption of command is because I asked him to represent the 379 in the Senior Leader Warfighter Forum last week back in the States, where he had the opportunity to share lessons learned with senior Air Force leadership in an effort to make improvements to the way the Air Force generates and presents forces to combatant commanders, including those here at IUD. I have no doubt his experiences and insights will lead to making the Expeditionary Air Base, Air Task Force, and Combat Link Force presentation models better in the future. I'd also be remiss if I didn't say my thanks to Lieutenant Colonel Brandon Sandoval and Chief Jeremy Sines, who fought alongside Jeff 
as his deputy in the SEL and ensured a smooth transition, even with the gap. A consistent message that I heard from EABG 24.2 squadron commanders is that they greatly appreciated Jeff's leadership and his ability to balance support with the freedom to maneuver. The inaugural EABG was collectively an awesome team, and they passed the challenge to leave this place better than they found it with flying colors. Among some of the group's notable achievements during Jeff's tenure was a seamless transition for the Secretary of Defense Directive, executing the construction of an 8,000 square foot aircraft shelter for the plus up of U.S. and coalition forces, and the bed down of both additional fighters and tankers during heightened regional tensions. Additionally, he led the group's complex transition from a $300 million annual Air Force budget to a novel quarterly Atari funded model integrating group efforts into an eight plus billion dollar master plan. He also partnered with high level Qatari leadership to further develop and revitalize IED for future joint operations. And finally, he led a multi-agency effort to streamline the bundling and transportation of 780,000 pounds of humanitarian aid bound for the citizens of Gaza and provide for the defense of Israel. Jeff, your leadership was characterized with the ability to empower subordinates, critically analyze complex problems, and solicit inputs from others without sacrificing the conviction to make tough decisions. I'm very grateful for the tremendous job that you did, particularly if you had the thoughts and demands of leading operations group back home as well. Please pass along my thanks to Candace and your children, Joseph, Zachary, David, and Sophie, for the sacrifices they made while you were deployed. I wish you and your family all the best. How about a round of applause for them? Today, I'm grateful to hand the EABG guide on to Colonel Mark Ford. He and I have been chatting about this as well before the PDSS, so I know that he's motivated and ready to lead. He carries on a legacy of service and brings with him multiple command, operational support, and staff experiences. He even texted me last night, letting me know that he has the EABG cell phone up and running, so I know he's ready to get after it. Mark and I actually have a little bit in common as well. We both grew up in Charlotte. And since he's a fellow fan of North Carolina Tar Heels, I know that I can trust him. <laughs> to Denise, his spouse of 30 years, thanks for letting us borrow his talents for a bit. And to his grown children, Maddie, Thomas, and Carlton, I know that your father will make you proud. I also believe this deployment will serve him well in preparation for being selected to take command of an air base wing next year. In closing, Jeff and all of our other outgoing squadron commanders, thanks for your time and your talents, and good luck. Mark and all the squadron commanders that are taking their guidance today, congratulations. All I ask is that you leave it better than you found it. And if you take care of your people, I'm sure that they'll take care of that for you. Thank you. Excited to serve with you at a critical time in the region 
and we look forward to answering our nation's call at the Grand Slam Wing. Now, we are missing a key figure today, like you mentioned, our friend Jeff uh, Mazik, uh, who led the 379 ABG over the last six months. And since Jeff could not be here today, he wanted me to share some of his heartfelt appreciation for the work you all did. So for 24.2 team, and especially Jeff's command team, he wanted me to thank you all again for the collegial approach in every situation. He said it was a team effort, open comms, and openness to new ideas that helped you all to leave IED better than you found it. And to the new command team, he acknowledged there's still a lot of work to do, but now it's your turn. I also want to recognize the EABG chiefs during their change of responsibility as well as our senior enlisted advisors. Chief Sides is completing his last deployment as he wraps up nearly 25 years of service with his retirement next year. And during this tour, Chief Sign was instrumental in bolstering our ties with our Qatari Air Force partners through critical training events, along with ensuring the smooth bed down of additional forces, F-22 Raptors, and KC-135 tankers to reduce tensions in the region. Chief, I want to thank you for your leadership and your service. And joining our command team today, too, is Chief Albany, who deployed with me from Travis Air Force Base. As a career maintainer, Chief brings a wealth of experience to lead our team. Chief, I look forward to our work ahead and serving alongside of you. Now, this is my third tour at IED, and I'll tell you, I can certainly notice the marked improvement since my first tour here in 2007. For over the last two decades, the teams at IED have committed themselves to continuously improving the quality of life and our mission capabilities. So for 25.1, we certainly have our work cut out for us, and we have some pretty big shoes to fill as the world relies on us to generate combat power on a moment's notice. We must be ready to answer our nation's call. So here's what I ask of you to ensure we can generate combat power on demand. First, safety. Don't take any shortcuts. Accidents reduce capability, and we want each of you to return home safely, if not better than when you arrived here. Secondly, keep an operational focus. Do not lose sight of why you are here. Every person on our team has a direct link to generating shorties. Don't be the weakest link. Finally, security. Everyone, every day. Don't lose sight that we are in a combat zone. That's exactly what our enemies are counting on us doing. Security of our network, resources, and our perimeter is the responsibility of everyone, every day. So do your part. The mission now belongs to us. We have prepared for this moment. We have a short window to effect change and leave our stamp on IUD like those who came before us. Let's get after it by being safe, staying operationally focused, and not forgetting our role in security. General Dickens, 24.2 is loaded to bases, and your new 25.1 team will swing for the fences to hit our grand slam. Thank you. Please stand for the official squadron assumption of command and stages of command. Starting with the Expeditionary Communications Squadron, Lieutenant Colonel Frank Dodson will assume command.
Expeditionary Force Support Squadron. Lieutenant Colonel Alex Shep will relinquish command to Lieutenant Colonel Bethany Keane. Expeditionary Civil Engineer Squadron, Lieutenant Colonel Scott Kelly, will relinquish command to Lieutenant Colonel Jonathan Needham. The Expeditionary Security Forces Squadron, Lieutenant Colonel Brian Rutt will relinquish command to Lieutenant Colonel Kevin Everhart. Expeditionary Logistics Readiness Squadron, Captain Tracy Mickens will relinquish command to Major Vanessa Boozer. Come on. 